As I joined the, the Corps and went to boot camp on election day, they Reagan took office. Today I'm getting to interview someone that I have known for a very long time. We're like kindred spirits. Every time I see him, the vibration's really good. And he's going to be teaching me a lot today. He's going to be telling you a lot today about himself. And I'm sure he hasn't done that with a lot of people <laughs> before, but he's That's granting great. me this privilege, telling me a lot about himself. He has one of the nicest look looking froze <laughs> that I've seen. And I know he's meticulous because I've seen his office. First of all, I saw his fro and I knew the man had to have his act together because you've got to do that every day, right? Without any further ado, let's talk with Eric. Thank you so much for being on the podcast in your office, in your place. Black Tokyo, and I don't know if the air is going to be high enough for you to be able to see that, but above us is his podcast, right? Yes. It's called Black Tokyo. Black Tokyo, yes. It's all my social media, Black Tokyo. And, um, I want to say thank you. Um, you've asked me um, a while back. The, I asked you three years ago. Yes. I've been asking you for a long time. You're always too busy, too busy. But I can see why you're busy. Yeah, but you my apologies. Beautiful office. Thank you. Thank you. You got a liquor store, grocery yes. store, liquor store yes. downstairs. A, a select shop. Yes. Everything. You have yes. that down there, and you got your car. I'm kicking the two beautiful sons. Thank you. Eric, my man. So let's start off with where were you born? Detroit, Michigan, Motown. Motown. Yes, Motown. And you're keeping it alive and well. Aren't you? That's it. Hence, hence the fro. <laughs> yes. So what were you like growing up? Do you have do you have a lot of siblings? I'm an only child. Only child? Yes, yes. Uh, mom, yes. Only child. Were you raised mom and dad both together? Yes, and uh, my mom got divorced, uh, remarried eventually and everything, but um, I, I've always had a support system. Um, even when she was divorced, uh, you know, my grandparents were there to help out my aunts, my uncles, my cousins. So um, although I was the only child, I have my three cousins, Ronnie, Donnie, and Tony. They're like my brothers. And they're still you know, um, Ronnie passed away, actually, and uh, he was the oldest of, of the three. Um, and, and Tony and Donnie are, are still back in Detroit. Um, but, yeah, they're like my brothers. And, uh, you know, a lot of friends, um, one of my, my best friends actually passed away, Kay Nell. And, um, you know, just running around with that guy. It's just a lot of memory. So, you know, my, my childhood, uh, I, I think, was very good. Well, you, were, you, were you close to your father? I would say yes and no. Um, when I was younger, I was closer. Um, as I um, got older and started forming opinions, um, I was, you know, not so close. Mm -hmm. And um, as I got older, um, you know, and he was always uh, in my life. Um, he was yeah, he was always there, always, you know, I would stay at, you know, at his house and he would take me places, teach me things, um, you know, things like that. Um, when I was older, uh, when I can drive a car, he gave me his car and I went down to, you know, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Is, is he still with us? No, he passed away um, as well. So my mom, my dad, my grandparents all passed away. Oh, they passed away. Yes. Okay. Mm. okay, so tell me, so growing up through that, through school and stuff, were you more academic or were you more sports minded? Um, I would say both. Um, I was small, you know, for my age and everything, and so um, you know, very competitive. I'm competitive to this day, and um, I had speed and you know jumping ability and everything. Um, so I would uh, talk a lot of trash, you know, playing sports. Um, had a lot of kids wanting to beat me up because I was a trash talker. Um, but you know, I could I could back up. I think for my play, wasn't the best basketball player. Couldn't dribble. Still can't dribble to this day and everything but i would say i was more academic and so um, i started high school at um, 13 started college at 16 and um it's six so you skipped a grade yes and could have skipped two grades my mom said no um Wait, so, what did your mom do what kind of work did she do um she at that time she was working as a cashier i believe okay. and uh my mom didn't even finish high school did she read to you a lot or anything? Or did she? She did. I was. I would carry around uh, a dictionary and encyclopedia, and people would give me a quarter if I can spell words correctly. And so when that did was. When you start that? I think I was like six, seven, eight. If you can six, spell eight. words correctly, they give you a quarter. They give me a quarter, and so that was my thing. So I was. I was professor. That was my nickname. So I was professor, and uh, they would, you know, open a book, say this, and boom, I would spell it. And, but I, I carried, you, you remember the, uh, I think it was brown or red dictionary and encyclopedia that set. Mm -hmm. So my mom bought that set right, okay. and those were my toys. 
and everything. And uh, I love to read. And so, and, but the dictionary was, was it. Mm -hmm. And so um, outside of having the name professor, I was teased and called white boy because of language. But it was predominantly black school you went to. I, no, my school was mixed. And I was called white boy in elementary and junior high school. And so some, some people called me that. Okay, well, the white kids were calling you that? <laughs> no, <laughs> the white kids were calling you that. No, no, brothers and sisters, you know. Um, and it's, because you, know, you could articulate your words. Right. And you just and, say that and them. Well, I mean, I did. You know, you picked your, right. your, your surroundings, right, and, right. and your audience and everything. Right. But um, that, was, that was my thing. Um, I, just, I love to learn. And uh, even though my mom didn't finish high school, she's one of the smartest women that I knew. Um, taught me a lot. You know a lot about life right mm -hmm. just in, in general and um, and her hustle was real um you know from the jobs that she held down and uh, watching her helping her um when i was i think nine when i started my business what was your business um i used to sell um, plant seeds in the neighborhood i would go door to door um so well, how'd you come up with that idea what made you decide you wanted to start selling plant seeds it was outside a, of it, getting money it was it was in the catalog and mm -hmm. you know you, you cut the coupon out in the back and you mail it in and all that. So I got my first set of uh, plant seeds and I sold that. And then there was another coupon or um, advertisement for shoes. So I went door to door selling shoes and uh, started making a little bit of money and then, you know, cutting grass. And when I made, you know, some cash and could buy some tools, had my cousins helping me and then other kids in the neighborhood helping me. Well, I figured, how'd you split it up? How'd you split it up? They'd help you. I would. You say, wait, so how yeah. much you get per grant? How much so, you get per line? I think. How many you work? Um, so, for example, if it was three dollars a line, mm -hmm. um, what was it? Or three, four, five, whatever it was. But I think I kept probably sixty percent. Okay. Um, because I bought the twos and, and you know, yeah, you got your, your long one and everything right. else like that, and you got the job for them. Right. And All then when it, it. when it snowed, same deal. Um, my cousins, my friends, and, you know, I broke them off. And then the complaint was on Sundays, you know, about taking, you know, something to church. So I love to bake. So I used to bake pies um, and cakes and sell by, and cupcakes. And you used to sell those on Saturday so women can take them to church on Sunday. And so that was my hustle. You know, I bought my bike, bought my clothes and, and everything. And it helps mom out, you mm -hmm. know, as well. And so I've always, I've always liked to sell, always. Samson and so that's so yes. good. That's so good. Okay, so go, you get into high school now and you start finding subjects you're really interested in. Right. Where did your interest start to go? So I'm 16 that's in high school and um, business. So I majored in business. I wanted to be a cost accountant, actually. Okay. And uh, my my favorite teacher, um, George Cohen, um, his brother, man, he had the, the afro, um, all the suits, you know, the watch, the rings. It was like uh, Niles Rogers from Chic. <laughs> But this brother could dress, but he was the, the accounting teacher. And so um, he was the one who told me, you get a job doing money, you'll always have a job. <laughs> right. And so that's what I wanted to do. And I was too small to play football, too small to play basketball. Um, I ran track, um, JV, cross country and everything. Uh, you know, couldn't. I wanted to I wanted to sprint. But anyway, because of size, it mainly, um, and I was not so much ability, I think, but I, because of size, couldn't do those things. So I focused more on academic side. Okay. Um, joined the pre-law club, and then I wanted to become a lawyer because I like law. And I mean, to this day, I read law, right? And so um, shifted from wanting to be an accountant to a lawyer mm -hmm. and um, ended up graduating and started college the next day. Wayne State University, same same college as uh, Dr. Suzuki Lorraine. Is that right? Right. It's, Did you you didn't meet her then? No, I met her when I went. I was up in Yakota, and I was hired. Uh, I mean, of course, ability, but same high same school, alumni, same, same college. She went same. to the same high school, same college. Yes. She was the sweetest she could be. I really yeah, Cast, like yeah, Cast Tech. Cast Tech is uh, at the time was the number one school in Detroit. There's just still that rivalry. You know, Detroit people that, you know, go to cast. A lot of famous people came out of cast mm -hmm. and everything. And um, so, you know, I left cast, went to Wayne State, and I had a so scholarship. So you stayed in cast for two years? Um, I stayed, well, I graduated cast four years. Four but, years, okay. Right, and so in what, in what, that's business? high school. Yeah, business. Well, that was a high school, so you did that in business. Right. Then you went to college. Right, went to Wayne State, Wayne State which is in Detroit. And so I also I had a, a scholarship to go to New Mexico Military Institute, and it was a two-year program. And um, when you graduate, you're commissioned as a second lieutenant. 
And so I would have been 19 as a lieutenant. And my father was like, that is not going to happen. And so he was a, a Korean War and Vietnam War vet. He was uh, 82nd. Well, why it was not going to happen? He, the age. He, he served in the Army. He served in the so Korean War. So he was right. like, no, not just not going to happen. Well, well, wait, he didn't want you to do it because he thought you were too young. Yes. That's the only reason. Yes. But you actually could have done it. Yes. Yes. Why would he, I don't get that. But he was he was enlisted the whole time. He was enlisted, eighty uh, second Airborne, and everything. And was it partially uh, jealousy? Are you showing? No, nah, not, nothing like that. I think it was more just looking out, you know, out for, for you, a son. You. And, and I, um, but you're still an officer. True, and I I think it's more of what he went through, you he know, during Nam and everything, and then coming back in Detroit, the riot of the sixty. Um, Oh, was it 67? He was riots? a numb. He was a numb? He was a numb, yes. Well, how old would he be now if he was still alive? Do you know? Ooh, uh, well, how old was he when he passed? 80, how old was he when he passed? He'll be 80 something. Okay. So he's right. 10 years. So he's got to be right. Right about 10 years. Yeah. But he was like, no, nah, that's not going to happen. So I'm like, you know, okay. cool. And so I told my mom, um, hey, I'm going to join the Marine Corps. And so I used to go down to the recruiting station uh, when I was 16 and help out, right? And, and Steve Massey was the recruiter. And uh, this guy, a big, big white guy, man, um, just looked like he was from the corn, you know, corn fed, you know, white guy. Uh, and uh, so I'm talking to him and everything. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to join the Corps. So I took the papers home to my mom because she had the sign because I was 17. And she's like, no, that's not going to happen. And I'm like, I'm just going to do a tour and I promise you I'll come back. Right. So she had the sign. I had to do the, 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 the form for the sole surviving son and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I joined the, the Corps and went to boot camp on election day, day Reagan took office. Because actually, you didn't have to go in at all. Right. Right. Because right. there was no draft at all during yeah, your time. At that time. And you wanted to go, well, you didn't want to practice law or become a cost accountant or anything like that. You said, I'm going to go in this. You wanted yeah. to become mature. Your father's probably telling you, you need to do the military. I'm just yeah, guessing. That wasn't in my air. Okay. The reason I joined the Marine Corps is so I could go to Japan. Wait, you joined the Marine Corps because you wanted to come to Japan. That's it. So when you talked to your recruiter, when you talked to your recruiter, you said, look, can I get to Japan? I asked him, yes. And um, he's like, yeah, we have three stations in Japan, Okinawa, right? So we have three stations in Japan and everything. And I saw the movie Shogun, and that piqued my interest. And I started reading, you know, James Clavell's novels, you know, Taipan, Shogun, mm -hmm. you know, yada, yada. And um, that's that was one of the reasons. And, but none of the martial arts and stuff had anything to do. Now I took um, Taekwondo uh, in the Marine Corps. Um, oh, I, I did. I think a little summer program for the Police Athletic League in Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, you know, when mm -hmm. when Bruce Lee was hot, everyone walked around in their, their shoes chucks and their chucks. And I'm knocking myself out of my <laughs> mate. Man, I I still remember doing this, and then the <laughs> nail came here. off. It. Yeah, I remember all that. I was that stupid kid, also. Yeah. You know, so um, still remember me, me and my friend Kanell, man. Uh, I remember all of that. Bruises and stuff, and hit you in the side, and everything That's else. It. Yeah, yeah. Elbow. every brother knew karate back then. Right. Everybody, 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 <laughs> yeah. everybody knew karate. Everybody knew karate. Well, see, I did it at a time when everybody did it, and we had platform platform shoes. But I remember those, yeah. And and the instructor I had when I was in Puerto Rico taught us. He wouldn't teach us how. He taught us how to defend, but he said, "I'm only going to teach you lethal moves." Wow. Okay. And that's all that's what we did. And so when we went into competition, we were only allowed to block. Wow. He only says but we could block in a way that would hurt. Right. So like if we came down with a downward block, we'd want to mm -hmm. hit you right in your leg. Right. But we'd be blocking. If we came this way, we'd try to pull, pull. you in. Yeah. And we so the guys didn't want to hit. <laughs> right. They didn't want to come in. <laughs> so we were hitting you with our blocks. No. Nice. He taught us how only lethal moves. He said you should leave a person one or two ways. Either they should be still or they should be in convulsions. Mm. And he said, the worst creature on this planet to wound is a human being. Human being that's right. He said, don't wound him. Because if you ever have to use this, use it to do what you can do. Right. So he said, no need to teach you all these cockles, which we had to do a few. Right, he right. Said, but he said, I want to teach you how to do what you're going to need to do. It's like having a gun. Right, survival. You know, when I was younger, um, like when my mom, we moved from our, our neighborhood. Uh, I live on a street called Indiana. And... Um, you know, it was for me. It was great. You know, the people on the block and everything, and um, I would hang out with these kids, man. Uh, you know, Floyd and Edward, and um, just you know Tim. I just a, a lot of great memories and everything. Uh, but then I moved, and I moved over. Uh, oh, where you moved? 
I was 13. Oh, wow. Right when I was starting high school. And uh, I would get jumped a lot. And Went to the, the new place? The new place, yeah. Well, why was that? Was this a different I, I, I had no crew. I didn't know anyone no over way. there. You know, back <laughs> so, in so Indiana, they wanted, to make, they wanted to make a point. Yeah, I, you know, there's, you know, my, my guys, the older kids, Rocky and Marlon, Derek oh. and Leonard and all these guys, man. Um, and I, like when my bike was stolen or something happened, they would go after dudes, you know, and right. everything. So... Um, it was, I didn't have any of that when I moved over to my new spot and everything. Right. So I um, got jumped uh, and I got cut from right the corner of my eye across this way. And um, with what? Um, fingernail. This, this, this girl jumped me first and then her cousins. Yeah. She was huge. They were just treating you bad, man. That's bad. Yeah. What's, it it what's, was. You, can I make you feel a little bit better? What's that? Because in elementary school, Wendy the Witch used to chase me home all the time. <laughs> and she would say, run, spaghetti, legs, run. Wow. Because I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the and yeah I, I got chased home before, you know, and everything from elementary school <laughs> because I was protecting this this girl. And her name was, um, uh, her last name was Jones. Mm -hmm. And uh, a white girl. And she was one of you know, three, wasn't many, at mm -hmm. this particular school. But I remember I went out as a safety boy. And I went out and I protected. I said, "Leave her alone." And I got, I got my butt beat. <laughs> you like the white girl? You're protecting the white girl. And uh, you know, so got beat up, um, got chased, ran down the the, the street toward the store my mom worked and everything. And I remember I ran. I grabbed the door and I opened the door. And she's like, "What's wrong?" I said, "They're trying to beat me up." And she's like. Get out there and fight. And I was oh, like, well, she, 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 she didn't know how many people were out there. Right? And so she came out from behind the, the I remember the plexiglass, right? Yeah. And she's like, get out there and fight. And um, I went out and the, like the kids were looking. And then she's like, which one? And I'm like, that one. She's like, fight them. And I fought. Did right? you win? No. Oh, you, you and your, I went. Did your mother have to pull kid. them off for you? No, nope, no. Nope. She, she watched the kids and she, she's like, but stop. Right, so I went in this door, cleaned up, went back outside. I think I bought some Fritos or something. Went up back outside, and they chased me. Uh, I think two or three more blocks, but two or three more blocks is where my crew was. The safety boys were, and so once I made it to Cherry Line, then it was on, and we were out they there. Were they were there. We we were fighting just just out there on the corner of Cherry Line, and Miss Felton, who was in charge of the, and you're 13, she's the guard. 14 now? I was, I think, ten at that time. Okay, ten. Okay. Ten. But the thirteen, when I was thirteen, um, when I got jumped and got cut. Um, I went, I don't even know if I should say this on YouTube, but uh, I, I went, uh, no, leave it in, leave it in. Oh, yeah. So I, I went, I went and got an ink pen and I got a razor and I remember I, I, I mean, melted it and right. I put it and then I taped it and um, I got a, a stick and some fish line and I taped that and I put a weight on it and I rolled it up. So next day I went to school, came home and they were, they were there and they're like, there he is. And I remember I reached in my pocket. Had the stick like this, the weights on it, pin drop. So I had a razor, basically like that on a stick. And because I used to pretend I was Thor when I was younger. Right, right, right. And first kid came and I just went whoosh, and cut. And then second kid, and, whoosh, and then it was like, ah! and I just doing this and the circle, like whoosh, they just scattered. And then after that, I became the crazy little kid on the block. And they left me alone. So that yeah. that is what I had to do to, to get them to stop. Yeah, so that was that was me at thirteen, man. And but I stopped getting jumped, you know, where I yeah, live and everything. And yeah. um, you know, went went through school and I, I love my school, Cast Tech, um, you know, great memories there and everything. And and um, when I got to Wayne and then joined the Marine Corps, it was um, you know, on the plane, Northwest Airlines, Ronald Reagan, you know, your uh, next president of the United States, and I was like, Reagan, you know. And um, so we get there, uh, training in the boot camp, and all of a sudden things shifted, and we started prepping to go to Iran, right? So our training changed, right? So remember all of that. I'm like, Iran? That was Iran, you know, and all that. So, yeah, so um, I ended up graduating. Um, didn't get the job, the MOS that I wanted. And uh, I remember I was in the, um, the, the, uh, the, the squad bay, and... I was just pissed. What did they put you in? I was um, selected to be a warehouse, a warehouseman, a forklift driver in a warehouse. Man, I'm in me. this 1980, right? So I'm like, hold on. So I'm 13 in school, in high school. I'm coding, writing codes. They didn't use programming them. at 13, and then they put me in. A, and nothing wrong with being in a warehouse. 
But I'm just thinking, no, I know. I'm coding and you put me in a warehouse. Because you know it. I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, so. I was supposed yeah. to be an infantry fueler. Hmm. Me and this one, we had the second best orders in the Air Force in our squadron. One guy had crypto, right. which is intelligence. Oh, yeah. And then I got in flight refueling, and he got Abernathy, two of us, and the orders are this thick. Right. He's going to spend some money on us. Right. A week after we got the orders, I'm sorry, your orders have been redlined, and Abernathy's have to be redlined as well. Wow. And I said, what's for? They said, they can't give you any reason. There's no reason. You're redlined. But you can have anything in civil engineering mm. or jet engines one or two. So you're saying I can either be deaf or I can be a carpenter or a plumber. Right. That's what you're telling me. Or grooves and grounds or something else. Right. I, you're talking about piss because I already sent those orders to my dad, right. everybody, and I'm so proud. Look at this. I ended up being a carpenter in the Air Force. Mm. You know, but that was not, that's not bad. And I'm not against all that. It's just right. not what I, I didn't want to be in the service exactly. in the first place. It was me. I got a draft notice, so I enlisted in the Air Force, which you have to you have to actually take ah, a test yes, to get in. Right. And I was one of two that got in. Wow. The test, they had guys around there. I'm not going to say what they look like. You know, right. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, I right. got in. I guess they, they scored on a bell curve. Okay. But I got I was shocked. We passed the test. The Air Force is hard. Yeah. We always say smart joke. people go to the Air Force. It's, it's, not joke. Joke. it's the most civilian branch of the military right. to get in. I remember a guy, Grunts, come in. From they were in the army, but they were they would do their from from Nam. They were coming to our base in Puerto Rico mm. for R and R. Right. And one cat, I remember him taking off his shoes and showing me how it looked like his toes were all together. Ah, uh, yeah. From being out there in the swamp so much, and he saw my room, which must have looked like this compared to where he lived. You and guys said, had hotels. He said, "Is this?" He said, "Is this is your?" I said, "Yeah." Why are you so? I said, "Yeah," because I'm there in the month all the time, and right. I don't have to have a roommate. He said, "Man, you got put." You couldn't believe it. Yeah. Lights going like this, music playing. Yeah. They couldn't believe it. That was me going to Osan the first time and seeing really? that. I freaked out. I was like, when I saw it, we all call them dorms, dorms hotel dorms. rooms. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> but uh, when, you know, because I, 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 like I met Cam Hansen in Okinawa. You Is know? that right? Um, so, I mean, so the first, I, I, I jumped. So, okay. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm a supply warehouse, right? And um, I go to supply uh, warehouse in school, which is in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Okay. Right at uh, at Barstow, Ringo, oh, at Barstow, California, and uh, I'm telling the guys, I'm like, I'm gonna fail my my final test, I'm gonna, my final prac. They're like, what? He had to drive a forklift, so I didn't have a driver's license yet. So I'm doing, you know, I'm number one, number two, number one, number two in the class and everything. Not putting much effort. It's not mm. hard, right? And so um, they're like, all right, Robinson, it's your turn. So I get on the forklift, I boom, 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 go up. And I get to the rack and I raise the fork and I hit the rack and you hear this. I backed it up and then you heard, shit, he's going to do it. So I went for it again, hit the rack and it's like, then look at the gunny and boom, hit it. The rack falls over, right? Knocked everything out. Back it up, put it in the park, turn off the, I mean, put the turn engine, put it in the park and I jump off, get a position of attention and gunny's like, God. Damn it, Robinson. He's like, you pass. And I'm like, right? And so the Marines fell out. And I'm just like, oh he, my he God. Knew he knew. Yeah. He's like, you pass. And so um, I became uh, a forklift operator and a warehouseman. And when we got our orders, um, I had orders to Camp Pelton, California. Right? And I did not want to go to California when I went to Japan. But the guy next to me, who wasn't a rocket scientist, he had orders to Okinawa. <laughs> and so I'm like, where are you going? He's like, Okinawa. I said, okay. I said, that's the rock. He's like, what's the rock? I said, that's in the middle of nowhere. He's like, what? He said, this is Japan. I'm like, nope, nope, not Japan. It's in the middle of nowhere. I said, no one wants to go there. He said, where are you going, Robbie? I'm like, uh, I'm going to California, baby, sunny California. He's like, oh, I got peoples in California. I'm like, what? I said, look, I said, really? I said, look, man, uh, I'm an only child. You know, if you got family back there, maybe you want to be near your family. So if you want to switch, why don't you go and. You guys can do that? At that time, okay. I said, if you want to switch, why don't you just, you know, tell, um, why don't you tell Gunny, but don't, don't tell him it's me, right? Don't tell him it's me. And so he goes over and he comes, comes back. He's like, Gunny said he doesn't give a damn what we do. We can switch. So we switched orders because there are no names on them. There's no names on the orders? At that time, there's no okay. names on them. So we switched. <laughs> And so I got to go to Okinawa, right? So I went in the head, man. I'm like, you know, doing the dance and everything. I'm going to Japan. I'm going to Japan. And so um, that is, that's how I got my orders to Japan. 
Uh, yeah. And how long did you stay over here? Uh, so there were one year orders. I went uh, command oh, recruiting. Yeah, well, only one year? I thought it was two years if you're single. Uh, this is no, 1981. 81, yeah. This is 81. Mine were two years when I came yeah. over here at the airport. Yeah, so I had uh, yeah one year orders. I went to command recruiting, one year orders. And uh, then I went to uh, New River, uh, North Carolina, Marine Corps Air Station there. And uh, I wanted to get back to Japan. And so I talked my way into getting orders back to Japan. And I think three months later, and I got caught. And they're like, nope, nope, not going to happen. You will stay here. So I'm like, damn. And so uh, one day during uh, lunch, I saw an advertisement that said, do you want to learn a language? And I'm like, yeah, I want to learn a language. And so I went over to Camp Lejeune. And it was actually an interview for the interrogation translation teams. And so. Um, I got set up for an interview, and I remember, like Green Marine, White Marine, he asked me, it's like, how do you feel about being the only dark Green Marine in the unit? And I'm looking at him, and there's, there's um, a gunny, um, Johnson, dark Green. And so he's looking at me, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at the Master Sergeant, so I'm like, how do you feel about me being a dark Green Marine in the unit? Right? And so like Gunny put his head down like this, and so the Master Sergeant and the Gunny, they, they didn't say anything, so it's next question. And so I get out of there and I pass. And I had orders, I think, two or three weeks later. And I would report it to Camp Lejeune to the interrogation translation unit. And so um, my thinking is, I'm going to get back to Japan. That was it. So I got placed on the, um, the Arabic interrogation team, uh, Arabic language interrogation team. And so I started learning the modern standard Arabic and um, had some issues with it. One, I wasn't motivated, right? So they put me on the... Uh, Asian team, so Chinese was the next language. So I started studying Chinese, but I had a hard time with the tones. Um, so that wasn't good to go. But Korean was perfect for me. So just the tones, um, I learned the alphabet, you know, and I think in a, it was a, in a day, I learned sure. the Hangul. Right? So like so yeah, like and so I learned how to, to read and write Hangul uh, in a day and everything. And I had already been working on kanji because of Japanese that I studied when I was in Okinawa. And, um, so we had got um, orders and we were going to Beirut. My team was going to Beirut. And so I went home on leave and the day I was leaving to report back, my mother called you know, from the port. She's like, hey, somebody named Gunny's on the phone. I'm like, hey, what's up, Gunny? He's like, report back to Camp Lejeune. I'm like, but I'm heading. He's like, nope, report back to Camp Lejeune. So I report back and it's like, you're not going to Beirut. You're going to Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California. I'm like, but I want to go to Beirut. Right. So this is my chance to interrogate. Right. Uh, and so I reported to Monterey. Um, so I'm there a couple of weeks later, get a Red Cross gram. And it's like Staff Sergeant walks up in the classroom. He's like, hey, go call your mommy. I'm like what? So go call your mother. And so that day is the day when the Beirut bombing occurred and the Marine. Right. So she thought I was in Beirut with my I team. Bet, I bet. Oh, man. It you was really, it, man. It see, was. That's when you yeah. start believing. There's more than just what we see. Right. You, know, there. you think there's got to be something else. Yeah. And and we all are on mission. Our mission, yeah. you know. So. Yeah. I would. Know. I would have been in Beirut. Uh, with, right. with, with my team. And so um, that messed me up. Uh, I remember sitting in class, and I was just. Yeah. It, Did anybody man, in your team get? Messed up? Not on my team, but I believe in the counter. But I believe in the counterintelligence team. There was one person, one if person. I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, it was horrible, and uh, you know the Marines, of course, were stunned. Everyone was stunned, but me in particular was very stunned because I knew a you couple of weeks there. ago I could have been there. That's right, and everything. And so uh, anyway, so I graduated from that, um, went to interrogation school afterwards, and then reported uh, back to Okinawa. Camp Hansen. And that began my journey on me, you know, deep diving into Japan. And I would, of course, go back and forth to Korea, went to college mm -hmm. in Korea, all that. Um, but um, that that began the journey. Now, what we're going to have to do is, I'm going to stop this podcast. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. But I want to do another one with you called Success in Japan. Okay. Because we're going to have to talk about what you've done and how you've achieved your success here. You have rocked the house. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, there's a question I'd like to ask before I end, yes. before I end the podcast. Knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. if you could go back in time yes. and meet the younger Eric mm -hmm. and give him advice, 
How old would he be? And what advice would you give him? He'd be 25, and the advice would be, don't get married young. That's enough for me, man. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, man. I want to thank all of you for watching this. Never forget, it's all on loan, so continue to reach for the stars. Because you're too blessed to be stressed.